Twilight is at Canterlot for one week, and Spike has the library to himself. But one night, strange noises wake him up, and strange things happen. What is going on? Rated teen just to be sure. Noises in the Night Written by The Random One 95 Chapter 1 Strange Noises One Shot Noises in the Night There, Spike jumped out of his little basket. He woke up with an accelerated and forced breathing, but he calmed down when he realized that it was just a nightmare, a terrible, horrible nightmare. Spike touched his forehead and noticed that it was really wet from the things that happened in it. He was amazed that Princess Luna didn't come to stop his nightmare, but that really didn't matter now. There, the horror is over. Now the only thing left to do is contemplate the darkness of the room. But there is not much. Certainly the night doesn't let you see anything. Of course, it's logical, but Spike wished that Luna made the moon brighter just for tonight. Spike's sleeping position is not comfortable. So Spike decided to rest his ear in the pillow and sleep looking at the wall. The night, quiet as always, invites Spike to find the noises because he was not used to not hearing anything, so Spike's ear scratches even for the quietest sound. He hears the air punching the leaves of the trees, and he hears the leaves shaking and yielding to its strength. Then, a louder noise can be heard, the familiar noise of hoofsteps. How could he forget the memories that this sound has brought with it. He practically has heard it during his entire life. He still remembered being half asleep on the couch and that sound approaching. The hoof steps belonged to Twilight. Her hoof steps weren't heavy nor light. They were perfect, and their sound brought comfort to Spike. He remembered Twilight levitating him to his little basket and covering him with the blankets while wishing him good dreams. And Spike, so as not to ruin the moment, kept silent. Maybe he still remembered the time when he caused that sound because he had a horrifying nightmare and ran towards Twilight's bed while screaming in fear. And he heard her footsteps, excuse me, he heard her hoofsteps approaching him to calm him down. Then, Twilight would offer him a space on her bed 
and swore to protect him if something bad happened. That way, Spike slept very good and very comfortable. All of these memories would be good for sleep if it wasn't for the fact that this noise shouldn't be heard at this moment because Twilight is at Canterlot and there is no one else at the castle today. In fact, this noise scared him, but Spike now has the guts to face the situation himself. After all, he is a dragon, right? The most probable thing, and the first that came to Spike's head, was that the hoofsteps belonged to an intruder. A scoundrel that had the intentions of stealing his gems and the belongings of the princess. But he messed with the wrong dragon. After everything he had faced with Twilight and the others, he was tougher than before. Spike checked his cloth, also his fire breath, and he got off his basket. That street rat was in for a big one. Spike turned on some lights of the castle. He even turned on the lights of the outside of the castle that illuminated a part of the street for a moment. He thought that a shadow was backing up. But it was only his eyes. His eyes were special. They didn't need to adapt to the sudden change of light. Spike went back to his basket and turned off all the lights. On the way, he also relaxed his claws and calmed his fire breath. Then... The absolute darkness reigned again over the castle. It was a false alarm only. <laughs> Spike remembered that he left the lights of the street turned on. So he went to turn them off and get some sleep. He got there in complete darkness and turned it off. But when he was at the principal's door, he looked outside the window and saw the moon. The moon was beautiful, radiant, infinite, but its light only immute, Ill Ill illuminated the castle very faintly. After a while, the moon hid behind a very dark cloud, leaving Spike in a complete darkness. But this wasn't a problem for Spike. His memory of the castle was so good that he could be blind and he still could make his way through it all. All that's left is to go back and finally sleep. Only two rooms separated him from his basket, the map room and the kitchen. Spike was walking to his bedroom, but when he was reaching the door that separated the two rooms, he felt chills on his back. At first, they were almost non-existent and completely ignorable, but they become stronger to the point where Spike was almost freezing. What's going on? In snowy days, Spike likes the 
hating of the castle. He could even see the machine with its light turned on in the corner. Then, why, why was it so cold? Maybe they are not real chills. They're just imaginary chills. Those chills that could make you shake from the impression. But Spike reached the door. He closed it behind him, and suddenly the chills were gone. The warm was starting to reach Spike once again. It was only his head. Tonight, his brain likes to annoy Spike more than normal. Now, the kitchen stands between Spike and his basket. Because behind the door lies Spike's room waiting for his arrival. And his basket stays with his pillow ready where he can finally get some sleep after this weird night. Step by step, Spike was getting closer to his room. But that's weird. The floor has a texture that was getting weirder each time. It is soft, but it isn't nice. In fact, the opposite. It's like small bits of it were moving. Those small bits take a form each time, more gross than the last. And what the heck? Now it's like the floor is full of worms that shake unceasingly. When Spike noticed this, he felt grossed out and he walked faster. But when Spike goes further, the floor gets more wet. Now it seemed like instead of worms, there, it's, 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 it's water, a lot of water, a thin and extensive puddle of water that soaks his feet. At a certain point, Spike noticed that there was something else than water because its smell became stronger and stronger until Spike remembered what it was. It was the unforgettable and unmistakable smell of blood. This is too much. Spike remembered that at the side of the door was the light switch. Now that was his objective. With fear, Spike ran towards it. While he runs, the sound of blood splashing became stronger. And the last thing Spike heard before reaching the switch was the sound of a fly. A sign of pestilence, of rotten food, or even a sign of corpses. The blood, the worms, it all connected in an unpleasant circle. All of Spike's emotions at that moment came to an end when he reached the switch and turned on the lights. Because the kitchen was impeccable, there was nothing out of the ordinary, not even a fly around. The floor was sparkling because it was clean. There was no fluids or insects around. Sometimes I have such a dumb imagination, Spike said to himself. What was he thinking anyway? Spike turned off the light 
and closed the door behind him. At last, it seemed like an eternity. But Spike was in his room once again. Spike walked to his door and why not? He wrapped himself in the blankets to prevent spoopy things from catching him. Spike giggled to himself for that, and he feels like a baby in a good way again. <laughs> <clears throat> Excuse me. But that's enough of this. It's time for sleep. The moon illuminates his room very faintly once again. But something is not right here. Spike analyzed his room, and he saw a black figure in the corner, and with the light of the moon, Spike could see the figure even better. The figure seemed to start moving, not to the right, not to the left, not backwards, but towards Spike. The chills return. It's getting closer. The blankets appear to be wet. And Spike recognized the smell instantly. It was the strong smell of blood. It's getting closer. Now his back could feel it too. That texture of thousands of little worms shaking took over his entire basket. The black figure now is only a few centimeters away from Spike, and it seemed like one of its extremities wanted to grab him. It did. The black figure squeezed Spike while it was getting closer and closer, Spike couldn't move. His throat was closing slowly. Now it was clear that if Spike wanted to scream, it would be useless. The last thing Spike heard was the sound of a fly. And when that strange figure revealed its identity, there! Spike jumped out of his little basket. He woke up with an accelerated and forced breathing. But he calmed down when he realized that it was just a nightmare. A terrible, horrible nightmare. Spike touched his forehead and noticed that it was really wet from the things that happened in it. He was amazed that Princess Luna didn't come to stop his nightmare. But that didn't really matter now. There, the horror is over. Now the only thing left to do is contemplate the darkness of the room. But there is not much. Certainly, the night doesn't let you see anything, of course. It's logical, but Spike wished that Luna made the moon brighter just for tonight. Spike's sleeping position. Um, okay, time to go. Uh, yeah, y'all read the rest of the fan fiction. Goodbye.